Did You Know? A few weeks before Jet Set Radio's North American release as Jet Grind Radio, Sega hosted a contest in San Francisco called Graffiti is Art. The contest aimed to promote graffiti as art rather than vandalism. Willie Brown, mayor of San Francisco at the time, attempted to shut the event down by revoking Sega's permits. Unfortunately for them, Sega of America had acquired all of its permits to host the competition through entirely legal methods, and it went off without a hitch, receiving over 130 entries. While Jet Set Radio's gameplay primarily involved skating, graffiti was an integral part of it from the beginning. Masayoshi Kikuchi, the project lead on Jet Set Radio, and art director Ryuta Ueda's previous project was Panzer Dragoon Saga for the Sega Saturn. After coming off such a hardcore fantasy title, Kikuchi said the team wanted to work on something completely unlike Panzer Dragoon, something dealing with pop culture. Ueda's initial concept art for Jet Set Radio led to the idea of a punky street kid wearing headphones rollerblading between people in a crowded town. From there, the team was inspired by the anti-establishment themes of the movie Fight Club. Jet Set Radio's graffiti tagging mechanic was a natural product of combining anti-establishment, the streets, and pop culture. Once the design was settled on, Jet Set Radio saw completion after only 10 months of development with a team of less than 25 people. Jet Set Radio takes place in Tokyo To, a vibrant interpretation of Tokyo, Japan. This was done so that the game's world was immediately recognizable and welcoming to a Japanese audience. Worried about how this would be received by Western audiences, Sega made some changes when localizing the game. The version sent to North America and Europe featured two extra levels, Phantom Street and Grind Square, inspired by New York City and Times Square respectively. Bantam Street features a central street below an elevated rail system, a blacktop park, and several tightly packed tall buildings. While the level takes place during the day, its design, as well as its name being an anagram of Batman, hints that the level was based on Gotham City. In fact, there's an image of an unused poster hidden in the game's code featuring three shadowy characters and the words, Dark Man Returns. But perhaps due to copyright for a game called Dark Man already existing, the poster was modified. Lastly, the game also features a few tracks specific for the North American and PAL regions, such as the remix of Rob Zombie's Dragula, featured on Phantom Street. While the game's composer, Hideki Naganuma, composed most of the game's varied soundtrack, he also found various artists throughout Japan to contribute. Underground J-Rock group Guitar Vader contributed the songs Magical Girl and Super Brothers. Super Brothers appears to be a parody of the Super Mario Bros, as suggested by a part of the lyrics which follows... At the time, Sega and Nintendo were fierce competitors, making this a strange reference to Frame. However, since the song predates Jet Set Radio, it's unclear whether or not Naganuma chose the song for that reason, or was even aware of it. That's not it for soundtrack easter eggs either. In one of Naganuma's tracks titled Let Mom Sleep, a sample of the phrase, Will you stop playing that radio of yours? I'm trying to get to sleep, can be heard from an old British sitcom called Hancock's Half Hour. I'm trying to get to sleep. There are a couple fine touches that were made to Jet Set Radio's characters during development. Throughout the game, you'll receive messages from DJ Professor K, the DJ of the eponymous pirate radio station Jet Set Radio. There are unused designs still in the game's code that show the characters without their wrist gadgets, suggesting that the station was a late addition to the game's design. In the character Beats' early texture files, his shirt says Ereki, short for electricity, and featured a lightning bolt and light bulb logo instead of what exists today. Beat was also featured on the European pre-release box art of Jet Set Radio with six fingers on one of his hands, though this was fixed in subsequent official art. Despite being a much larger and more detailed game, Jet Set Radio Future took roughly the same amount of time to create and featured most of the same team members. The game was a launch title for the Xbox in Japan, a decision which appeared strange considering it was competing with Japanese consoles. Kikuchi chose to develop Future for the Xbox because the US market appeared to be more accepting of Jet Grind Radio than Japan was of Jet Set Radio. Jet Set Radio Future was created as a restructuring of the original instead of a sequel, as the developers didn't want to feel restricted by the previous game. Among a myriad of gameplay changes, the game's main miniboss, Captain Onishima, is replaced by Commander Hayashi. Though the characters are quite similar, there appears to be a weapon swap for Hayashi's in-game model which would replace his revolver with the katana. However, he is never actually shown wielding the sword. 
Jet Set Radio Future also pushed the amount of fake in-game branding with more flyers, in-game objects, and billboards, one of which hides a possible reference to Prince of Tennis. This billboard features a tennis player with dark blue sleeves and shorts and a white hat, closely resembling the outfits featured in Prince of Tennis. The billboard also says Contrail. This could thus be a reference to a musical single of the same name made by Chotaro Otori, a Prince of Tennis character who composes music in his spare time. There are a number of hidden easter eggs and odd occurrences in Jet Set Radio Future. Hidden in the GG's garage is this upright, old-style bullet train. It's unclear why this exists as it's hidden away in the game's level design, but if you observe the window at the top of the train, you'll see what appears to be a joke on the behalf of an artist. Kibokaoka Hill is a messy, crowded residential district. There are a large number of stray cats strewn throughout the level, including a small room hidden amongst the buildings filled with cats. Suspiciously, Kibokaoka Hill is also the level where you can unlock Potts, the GG's dog, as a playable character. Many of the levels in Jet Set Radio Future are inspired by and named after real places in Japan, despite not being direct recreations. Tokenzaka Hill, the first major level in the game, refers to a neighborhood in Shibuya, Tokyo, named after an Edo period bandit who renounced his ways and became a Buddhist monk. Perhaps more famously, it features a large number of antique stores and love hotels, which are short-stay hotels for couples seeking some additional amenities and privacy. Chuo Street refers to the main thoroughfare in Akihabara, a part of Japan famous for its shopping and classic gaming arcades, from which a massive Sega building is clearly visible. There hasn't been a new Jet Set Radio game since Jet Set Radio Future, but in 2006, Kuchu Entertainment created and proposed a concept for a new entry in the series to Sega. The untitled successor was planned for the Wii and would have brought back Beat, Gum, Tab, DJ Professor K, Poison Jam, and featured a new game called the Squabble Hawks. However, Sega was not interested in the concept, and thus the game never came to be. Since the development team behind Jet Set Radio was reabsorbed into Sega in 2004, Kikuchi and Ueda have done major work together on the Yakuza franchise. Instead of joining them, Naganuma left Sega to pursue his own prospects, the latest of which include music for an upcoming game called Hover Revolt of Gamers, an open-world skating game largely inspired by Jet Set Radio. That's all for today, but don't forget to subscribe to Did You Know Gaming and follow Did You know Gaming on Facebook and Twitter. Make sure you also check out DidYouKnowGaming.com, and if you like this video, check out our other videos. And while you're at it, if you've any interest in a video about the top 5 video game rivalries, well I happen to have made one, and it is right over there. I heard a rumor a certain Kedicarus might be uh, in the video also. Uh, that's a joke, it's not a rumor, I, it's, he's in there. I made the video, so I, I know he's in there. I checked.